Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can uh, come together, we can uh, learn about the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, help me uh, communicate in a relevant way, that, a way that we can understand uh, the fruit of the Spirit and we can apply it to our lives, that we can um, look at these things and we can say, hey, do I have this in my life? No, I don't, so I need to go get me some at the grocery store or wherever I need to get it uh, and um, apply it to my life today. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. That little uh, go buy and fruit of the Spirit at the grocery store is a hint for later, okay? And so uh, last week we, we started this series. We talked about a couple of them, and we're going to jump right into it again today. A little bit of a recap is uh, another way of saying fruit of the Spirit is it's evidence outwardly of what God's doing on the inside of us. And so when God's working on the inside of us, he's, he's prompting us to make a change. He's prompting us to make an adjustment that we see that on the outside. And so how does uh, something produce fruit in our life? Well, uh, as the uh, very knowledgeable city boy that I am, uh, I uh, looked online and um, something produces fruit because a seed's planted. And we talked last week about how we have a little section in our, right next to our fridge by our sliding glass door that's got seeds that Becky's planted that are starting to grow up, and we can never get them to actually grow bigger than like that. Uh, we have to go to Home Depot and buy our plants, but uh, are, we, are, we, are we close, Beck? Are they... Are we going to get plants out of there? Like, no. Okay. So we had mushrooms growing at some point. We never planted mushrooms. But anyway, it is what it is. But the seeds planted, and then with fruit trees and, like, with, like, vegetables and stuff, that, that, uh, that a flower comes out, and then pollen um, comes on those things, and then the, the flower falls off, and then the fruit begins to grow. That's what I've uh, seen. Uh, that's what I my extensive research online. And the, the, the fruit will grow out of that and it starts small and then it'll get bigger. Our jalapenos will start out real small and then they get real big and then they turn red and they're amazing. And so this is how the fruit is produced in a plant. Well, how do humans produce fruit? Well, humans produce fruit because um, <laughs> she's not ready to go back yet. It's okay. Um, a seed is planted in our life. It could be a thought. It could be something someone says to us. It could be us reading the Word of God. It could be anything. It's planted in us. And I like to say it is, is things that we watch, things that we hear, get stored into our lives. And it, 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 we could always bring it back. We've talked about you can never unsee things or you can never unhear something. And it gets, something gets planted into our hearts. And then through things that we do, we don't see ourselves getting pollinated, but it'll, it'll bring life to that seed and it'll grow and it'll produce fruit, right? For example, if you are always getting talked down upon and you're always getting told you're never going to do any good in life and that seed's planted and then you make a mistake and you don't do any good and that gets fertilized and pretty soon you're going to be like, well, I guess I'm not going to be good in life. And so that's how that happens. And so we looked that as humans can produce, we can produce two different types of fruit. We can produce fruit from, from our flesh nature, from our, our, just our, our, the sin nature that we were born in, or we can produce fruit that's from the Spirit when we get born again. And so we see this in Galatians chapter 5, it'll be up on the screen. It says that when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, these are the results. This is the fruit that's produced, okay? Now, this isn't something that's like, this is what all of us produce. No, you can pick, you, not pick and choose. This is what you can see. Hey, I've got some of that in my life, and I need to fix it. Is it produces uh, sexual morality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. He goes on to say, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this is not a, oh, you're, this is what we've got in our lives and you need to fix it. No. He goes on to say that if, we, if, we're, if we're pollinating the things in our flesh, this is what is produced. But when we pollinate things with the Holy Spirit, when we read the Word of God, when we cut other, those things out, when we cut certain stuff out, this is what the Holy Spirit produces in us. The spiritual side says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then he says there's no law against these things. So he, the beginning part we read, he lists out all this stuff and says, hey, you know, you can't inherit the kingdom of God if, you've, if you're doing all this stuff. And then he lists the fruit of the Spirit, which is nine of them. 
And then he says there's no law against these things. And we've said before, you're not going to get a ticket from showing too much love or being too kind or being under self-control. You're not going to get a traffic ticket, right? You're not going to get in trouble at school for that. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is singular. It's not plural. It's not like our picture there. We've got several different types of fruit, but they're all fruit, right? The fruit of the Spirit is one fruit. We're all supposed to be showing these things in our lives. It's one fruit, but it has nine characteristics, okay? And if we go uh, to our picture of our apple, um, and I was going to bring us an apple today, and I was going to slice it, but then I come to the great revelation that our new apple slicer slices in 12, not in eight. And so I was like, well, I don't want to have, I don't want to create three more fruit of the Spirit real fast. So either I have to A, go get an eight, an eight cutter or a 12 cutter, or I'll have to take a couple off and we'll just pretend. But anyway, if this was our life and we opened up our lives, this is what it would be like. It's one fruit, but there's nine different parts of that. And um, I do apologize. We had, I had the, the things last week where love's the core, love's the middle. And then when we were going around and talking about them, I put the words on it. Well, I forgot to do that this week. And so, but we'll just go on. Everyone's expected to display all of the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, right? If we took off the bottom left one there and um, we took it out, it would be incomplete. It would still be an apple. It would still be good, but it would be incomplete. And we don't want to be incomplete. We want to be complete. And so if you take this apple, everything there is part of it. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is for everyone. Everyone's supposed to be loving. Everyone's supposed to be kind. Everyone's supposed to be self-controlled. Everyone's supposed to be patient. Everyone's supposed to be joyful, have peace. Everyone's supposed to be faithful and gentle and good. We're all supposed to be this way. You can't just say, well, sorry I snapped at you. Sorry, I, 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 guess, I guess God just, I guess that's just not what I'm given. God's not giving me patience or self-control or being kind. Or maybe you yell at somebody in a kind way. Anybody do that to your kids? You're in so much trouble. You got a smile on your face. You think it's good, right? No, you just yell at them. You're in trouble. See, I guess patience isn't one of the fruits that the Spirit has given me. No, we're all, it's all part of it. If we go back to that fruit, we can just say, oh, the apple's juicy and it's green, but it doesn't taste good. We're not going to want that apple, right? Or it's got a bruise on it. We're going to cut that bruise out to make our apple uh, fritters or something, you know? You know, which I guess, you know, we just have to make sure we're showing all of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. But we can't be willing, we, ha- we can't give ourselves a pass by saying, I've got faithfulness and self-control down, but I just don't have any patience. But I'm just not loving. Oh, we have to have it all together. And it's all a work in progress. Does that make sense? You know, we're, we're, we're not going to have 100% full metal of all of these nine right now. But as we work towards it, we'll, we'll get there in, in our lives. But we need to show all the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. We are all different, and fruit will be seen in different uh, our lives differently. Um, I, we have a family friend that I've never seen her upset. I've never seen her mad. She's always just, you know, real loving. Even when her kids get in trouble, she's always just real loving and real kind. And I'm like, you're weird. It's, it's like, uh, Mrs. Terry, it's like, oh, I was like, you're just, you, God must have just made you different. She's like, no, I've just tried to put all the fruit of the Spirit shown in my life. And I'm like, it's kind of awkward. This is just weird. Like, you know, at least yell at your kid or something. She's like, no, we'll do it this way. And I'm like, well, Okay. But you see, we have to have all these in our lives. So I I cannot have joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control all myself. But it's because of God in in my life. It's God helping me. We can't love like God wants us to love without God in our life. And we're going to hit on love again today. Love's the core. Love's the middle that holds it all together. There's four words for love that's in in the Greek. English is one, love right? But if you want to break that love down, you, 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 I'm going to say these wrong, but it's E-R-O-S, eros, that's a, that's a sensual love. And then you have uh, storge or storge, 
Um, it could be either way. That's a family love, right? You, you have brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, cousins, uh, nieces, nephews. You, you love them because they're family. And then there's the philia, which is a love between friends. You know, I, I have friends. I love them, but I'm not in love with them, right? There's, see the difference? And um, then there's agape. That's a supernatural God kind of love. And that's, we can only get that love when we become born again. We can have the other three. We can have Eros, Storge, and Philia, the, the central love, family love, and the, uh, the love between friends, and we don't know God, right? We can have all those. But when you get the God kind of love, that's when you get when you get born again, you, that God puts that inside of us. And we know this because, because the Bible says that before, God, before we loved God, God loved us. And so the, the, the agape kind of love is we had rebelled against God, but the Bible says that he loved us anyway. And there's not a person who has the ability to love the agape way unless they become a Christian, unless, they, unless they're born again. Because you can't love the way God loved unless you have that relationship with God. And how do, how do, we, how do we see this? We see this in that God gives us the agape love and we have the ability to love our neighbors when they're throwing their, their yard waste on our property, right? You know, when you mow, you're supposed to mow with the, the chute going into your own place. You don't mow with the chute going into your wife's flower beds or the neighbor's flower beds, right? Well, hey, buddy, turn yourself around, do the hokey pokey while you're mowing the yard there and turn your shooter thing that way so it's not in my wife's flower beds, right? Before Christ, what a go-ahead words with this man. After Christ, it's like, well, just it, stupid is as stupid does, I guess, right? You know, and, I, you know, you can get real upset, but you, you love your neighbor no matter what they look like, what they smell like, how they talk. You love your neighbor because that's what the Bible says for us to do. And, you know, you, you love people with the agape God kind of love. You love people no matter their voting preference, no matter their favorite sports team, no matter what they do in your life, you have that God kind of love to them. Can you love somebody like that before Christ? No. You want to, you know, you want to... Someone says something wrong to you, and you're like, well, let's, I don't know, they, they throw punches? How do you, what do you, what do you call it now, Byron? Anything? I got a microphone, and I got a backup mic right here. What was that what movie? Anyway, I don't know. That was Joe Dirt, I think. Never thought I'd quote Joe Dirt in a message, but I guess I just did. But this is the love that God gives us as a gift. When we become born again, we have a love that surpasses when people do things to us. It surpasses when we're offended. It surpasses when we're upset. It's a gift, and it's produced in our heart by the Holy Spirit who lives there. Fruit is basically, it's the evidence of things happening on the inside coming out. Man, I just don't think that I can love like that. Well, spend time with God. Spend time in the Word, and you'll see that that fruit, that little seed gets pollinated and becomes fruit because then you start treating people different. You start treating total strangers completely differently because that God kind of love is coming out of you. Because when you think about it, if you've ever had an encounter with somebody that doesn't, they just rub you the wrong way. Anybody have that? Hopefully it's, you're not sitting next to them right now, right? Uh, uh, but you just run the wrong way, right? And it's just like, oh, I don't, there's something about them I just don't like. Well, you got to remember, think in your head that, hey, Jesus died on the cross for them too. And when you start thinking it that way, it's like, oh, right? You know, I guess I can't complain. I guess I got I to gotta show that God kind of love to them. The, so that's love. And, and, and you, we really can't encapsulate love in 15, 20 minutes, Right? It's, 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 it's vast. So the next one we'll talk about is patience. Everybody look at your feet and see if you got steel-toed boots on. Because this one, when you step, it could step on some toes and it can hurt, right? Or you could be walking away uh, from church and your little pinky toe can hit the pew. Nothing worse than pinky toe hitting furniture, right? This one is directed at myself as well. I... My patience sometimes is firecracker wick short. Am I the only one? Right? Maybe your patience is longer. I don't know. But sometimes my patience, is, it's not there. But we're going to talk about it today. 
So patience is defined as the quality of being patient. Right? As bearing, of provo- as bearing provocation or annoyance. The quality of being patient when you're being annoyed. Right? Do we have anybody here that's annoyed? Not right now, of course, you're not annoyed. But do you get annoyed often? Yeah? Claire says yeah when she's around her brother. Yeah? You get annoyed? Right? How many of you are the annoyer? Yeah? Sometimes I think that's one of my spiritual gifts is the annoyer. Anyway, I'm a carrier of the annoying, annoying tin. Annoying, anointing, annoying. Anyway, so, or you are being patient when there's a misfortune, or you you have the ability of being patient when there's pain, or without complaint. Nah, I'm out. Fruit. Where are you at? Fruit of the spirit. I'm trying to look inside to find it because my wife tells me I can complain. I'm like a grand champion, gold medalist in complaining. I just am. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, You have the quality of being patient with a loss of temper or irritation or anything like that. You have an patience is an ability or willingness to suppress restlessness or annoyance when confronted with delay. Anybody uh, get kind of frustrated when your calendar schedule gets thrown off? Right? That's me. Oh, anyway, I'm working on it. Patience is the ability to wait. All right, anybody, like, come on, let's go with the message here. I'm hungry, right? It's to, or to continue doing something despite difficulties or to suffer without complaining or becoming annoyed. These are all what patience means, right? Like, man, all right, seriously, I got to work on this. Patience, being provo- bearing provocation or annoyance, misfortune, delay, hardship, pain, with fortitude and calm without complaint, or... Characterized by expressing such quality, quietly and steadily, persevering or diligent, especially in detail or exactness. Patience comes from either a person or a situation. Right? That's what the co- patience comes from that. I don't have to be patient if there's no one else on the road. If I'm driving to work and there's no other cars. Right? I don't have to be patient when the guy behind me's lights are super bright. Hey, guy behind me, those lights are super bright. Why did you go to the store and buy those super bright lights? I'm trying to drive at work here. It's 5.15 in the morning. I'm trying to drive. It's, it's kind of annoying that I have to drive at work with your bright lights behind me. Pass me already. Would you please just pass me? Anybody? It comes from a person or a situation. Hopefully you're not looking at the person next to you and you go, thank you for helping me in my perseverance of patience. Patience isn't something we can go to Walmart and purchase. But patience is really made at the parking lot in Walmart. Right? I don't know. I like the self-checkouts because then I don't have to worry. I'm not, there's no line. I can just get in, get out, boom, done and gone. There will be times when we have to be very patient and then something comes up and seems to block every ounce of patience we have. But God wants us to express patience in our life, to express it in everything that we do. Have patience. Have patience with your spouse. Have patience with your kids. Have patience with your coworkers. Have patience with the total stranger. This is where agape love comes in. I don't know you, but yet I'm going to show you the God kind of love in patience because that's what Jesus would want us to do. Do you think Jesus got camel rage? Or walking on the road weight rage? <laughs> yeah, was like, move, he would just go, and they'd move, right? That's what Jesus would do. No, he wouldn't do that. Just teasing. But we got to think about it like, hey, we should interact like Jesus would. Why do we want to do that? Because there's some satisfaction with that. Anybody ever get really, oh, I just, just, you know, you're in that, that deadlock thing where you're at the shopping cart and you're coming up and there's, I can't get through. And you're sitting there and you're like, all right, I'm too far ahead to just about face and go around the other way. So I'll just wait. And they're talking or they're staring at the canned fruit. There's only a certain number of canned fruits you can get. So let's move it along here, pal. 
And they're just talking and doing a thing, and you're, just, you're standing there with your hand on your cart. <sighs> and you're gripping it a little bit harder. And next thing you know, you're getting divots because your nails are gripping your own hand. And then they finally see you, and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Here, let me move. And you're in your head, what are you saying? It's about time. I grew a beard in this whole time that I was here, right? Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just, is this just me? But Becky does a lot of shopping, and I'll go pick it up online. And I still have to practice patience, and I'm not even in the store. We all have to practice patience. Because when we show the God kind of love and we show it through patience, it does something on the inside of us. We get less gray hairs. We're less anxious. We're, we're not like it's a free, oh, whatever happens, happens type thing. But no, it's, it frees us up. Because you know what? God could be keeping us from something. God could be helping us uh, stay away from a situation. You know, like sometimes some things happen and you're thinking, man, if it was just a delay of 10 seconds, things would have been different. And so we, we um, I'll talk about that here in a second. But there will be times we will have to be very patient. And there will be times that, that, that the things that we would just have to be patient, that the enemy is going to try and pull that patience out of us. And we have to combat those distractions with an interaction. Oh, I'm, be, I just, I'm trying to be patient and I just can't. All right, combat that with an interaction. All right, God, you've asked me to be patient. You want that to be displayed in my life. So I'm, I'm asking you to just bring that fruit of the Spirit right out right now and help me be patient. And when you do that, your heart rate will calm down, your blood pressure will calm down, and you will start seeing that person or the situation that's blocking your patience differently. And so in the Bible... Romans chapter 12, 12, or verse 12 says, Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. So it says rejoice in, in our confident hope, that's Jesus, be patient in trouble, be patient when things go up. And he says, and keep on praying. You could be patient and be like, all right, God, thank you for moving in my life. And you know what? Thank you for moving in their life. You can never be mad at someone you're praying for. Does it make sense? So spouses pray for each other, right? Abraham and Sarah waited years to have kids. We know the story. They were old, up in the age. They couldn't have kids. And then they got a hold of the word of God, the very words of nature. He goes, by this time next year, you'll have a kid. And so when they were trying to be patient and they were, what, what's going to happen? We want kids. God, you said I'm going to be the father of, of, of many nations, looking in the stars. That's how many kids, descendants I'm going to have. And yet... I don't see a baby bump yet. Patience. And remember what the word of the Lord said. So in our lives, how do we apply that? Hey, you guys want to be pregnant at 90? Make the Bible relevant to you? No. You can have patience and remember the very words of God. Remember what the Bible says. Go back to the word. Figure and, and remember what the Bible says. Joseph had his dream. Then he got sold into slavery. And it took decades for this dream to come through. So he was patient. He was sold to, he was in Potiphar's house. He made his way up the food chain there, was in command, and then got falsely accused, thrown in prison. And then a couple years went by. You talk about patience. He had to deal with patience, but God's plan came through. We're facing, we're faced with exercising patience on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day. If you've got kids, sometimes multiple times an hour. Are we there yet? I'm hungry. Are, are we there yet? I'm hungry. Feed me, you know, food, the plate is still got food on it from supper. Can I have a snack? Like, hey, could we just finish part A before we go to part B, you know? But we have to be patient even when we know the outcome's going to be okay. If we know the outcome's going to be fine, why aren't we patient, right? If we, we know the outcome's going to be okay, why, are we, why aren't we patient? We need to be patient with this. But what if it's not what if it's somebody else's fault? Do we still have to be patient? So when we're, when we're talking about maybe God's delaying, not, he's not delaying things, but when we're, when we're faced with a situation where we need to be patient, God's working things. Because one time when we were in youth ministry, we took a trip. We were going up to summer camp up to Des Moines. 
and we drive through Mount Pleasant. Well, our youth group and the youth group from Mount Pleasant at the time did a lot of things together. Uh, we went on missions trips and went to the same summer camp. So on the way back from camp, some of the kids in our youth group wanted to ride their bus with them. And so we, we had the kids and swapped buses. And then we stopped at their church in Mount Pleasant, went to the restroom, got all of our kids and left. Well, I was like, we got to get back on the road. We need to get on the road. We're running late. And, and Becky's just like, just have some patience. Just let the kids hang out, right? And this was, this was probably 15 years ago. This is before social media and, and all that kind of stuff and, and before texting and they, communication was a lot uh, uh, freer. I'm like, we just got to get on the road. Well, we finally, we got on the road like 20 or 25 minutes late. And we all of a sudden hit traffic because this was, was it before the highways were, the highway was just the two lane going up, up to Iowa. It was all just two lane, not the four lane. Now, there was a traffic accident that we were about 25 minutes behind. Oh. All right. So not saying that we would have been in it, but we could have been pretty darn close. And so then that's when I took a step back and saying, okay, if God, if I, if I'm, if, if we're just kind of, okay, I need to be patient, but maybe God's, you know, keep protecting us somehow. You see, we need to be, have patience in our lives. In first Timothy chapter one, verses 15 and 16, we'll have it on the screen there. It says, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul, this is Paul saying this, and I am the worst of them all. So he just put a challenge out there to everybody to be worse than him. No, he's saying, hey, what I've done, I've done, I'm the worst sinner of them all out there. He goes, but God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as an example of his great patience, even with the worst of sinners. So newsflash, we're not the worst of sinners, right? So God's still going to have patience with us. He goes, then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. And so he's saying, hey, I, I was really, really, really bad. And so my, Jesus had great patience with me. So that example is, is now everybody else can come to Christ or can realize that, hey, if God had patience with Paul, he'll have patience with me. He goes on in 2 Timothy, and he says, But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose of life is. He goes, Paul is saying to Timothy, You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. How did Timothy know these about Paul? He's seen them in an example, and, and he's seen them in his life. right? Just like the, 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 the lady I was talking about earlier, I've never seen her upset or mad. I've seen that in her life, and I'm like, man, I want to strive to be that way. I've never seen somebody that was, that was loving, patient, kind, and I'm like, yeah, that's not for me. I'd rather be rude, non-loving, and just snotty all the time, right? If you do that, you're going to be by yourself. No one's ever seen someone doing good and go, yeah, that's not for me. Have fun. I'm going to do bad. Like, you want to do good. You want to see it. You emulate it. He says, uh, how did Timothy know Paul had faith, patience, love, and endurance? He saw it in display in Paul's life. He, he is the fruit of the Spirit, is the fruit on display in our lives. If we put a little checklist on the mirror, right, and we're standing in front of it, so that checklist is on us, is there love? If you rewind today's tape at 10 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock, or if you go to bed at 6, whatever, if you're brushing your teeth before you go to bed and you're replaying the day, was there patience? Was there love? Was there joy? Was there peace displayed in my life? What fruit was displayed in our lives? You can put that at the bottom. Well, I got upset, or I was not patient, or I was not kind, or I was not generous. I, I did this. And if you did that, and it's not one of the nine fruit of the Spirit, then pluck it out. And every now and then, I look in the mirror, and I see this eyebrow that's going, bling, it's like that way. And I'm like, I don't collect weirdly pointing eyebrows, so I, I pluck it out, right? It hurts sometimes because I think it's like into my brain, like it's that long, like the root is way back into my head. That was a joke. But it just, ow, that hurts. And it only hurts for like a second. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't need you no more, eyebrow piece. And I throw it in the trash can. I used to just throw it on the counter. And my wife's like, could you please like put it, you know, eight inches over into the drain? Yeah, I got enough patience for that. 
So I'd pluck it and throw it away. You get it out. If you got fruit, what, does, what fruit was displayed in my life? And it was bitterness. It was envy. It was fits of rage. It was what we read before the fruit of the Spirit. Then say to yourself, how can I not have that on display tomorrow? How can I, how can I change this up so I have love, patience, peace, kindness? Right? How can I have that on display in my life? If you seem to lose your patience quickly, something's draining it. I learned this a long time ago via video games. I can't get past this level, and I'm, I'm trying, and I'm doing this and doing this, and then I was, I was being consumed by it, and then I had no patience everywhere else because it was, it was sucking the patience out. It was dry. What it's draining you, what's taking it, it is, not, it is in our best interest to identify what's draining our patience and cut it out, pluck it out. We're getting, we have our, our salsa gardens are ready to grow. And um, we, if we plant a tomato plant in there, and then all of a sudden some dandelions come and move in, right? We're not like, oh, those are pretty little dandelions. But I, I've learned this past week that dandelions are useful. And, and so you can use dandelions for other things. But I'm not like, oh, cute little dandelions. You're so nice. And, you know, and they turn into the little fuzzball things. And I pick it up and go, and blow it right into the garden so more dandelions pop out. No, you, you get, get those things out of the garden. Why? Because it's going to suck the life out of our vegetables. You know, it'll, or instead of having like world record tomatoes, we'll have like cherry tomatoes, and it's not a cherry tomato tree. Is that possible? Okay, it'll be real small. The salsa will taste bad. It'll taste dandelion-y. That was a good joke. If I say so. Thank you for showing patience. We have to remove the patience robbing weed and then use the word of God as fertilizer to feed the patience in us. So we have love, we have patience, and now kindness. Dictionary.com defines kindness as the state or quality of being kind. Right? A kind act, favor, kind behavior, friendly, you know, being nice is a kind of a good or benevolent nature or disposition as a person that's showing or proceeding from benevolence, indulgence, that's a lot of stuff there. Humane, gentle, nice. You see, Proverbs 11 says, your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. You can say things nice, but there's no love behind it. Right? Right? You can speak truth, and it's cruel. But you can say the same thing in love. Does that make sense? You, when, so, so when your, your, your main core is love, and you've got kindness on it, when it's connected to it, you're saying things like Jesus did. When Jesus spoke truth, he spoke it in love. He didn't speak it in cruelty. So when he's saying, hey, ye of little faith, he's not like, hey, dummy, dumb, dumb with no faith. He's like, hey, you have little faith. You can do this. He was speaking the truth in love, not in cruelty. You see, in Ephesians chapter 1, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and he gave, it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us who belong to him to belong to his dear son. He's so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins as he showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. It was out of his kindness. We can, we can do a self-analysis test and ask, are we compassionate? Do we show sympathy? Do we show kindness? Are we kind-hearted? Are our words and actions and motivations thoughtful, considerate, or are they selfish? You see, I've done this a lot. I try to do this on a daily basis, and a lot of times I feel like I'm getting a big F for fantastic. No, sometimes I feel like I've missed it, you know. So I try to be kind better. I try to, be, to have my words spoken where there's love connected. 
See, I can, I can have a kind, I can speak the truth, but I want to speak it in love because that's what God would want us to do. And as we close, you know, these fruits aren't, aren't always seen in our lives, but we have to make sure that they're evident and they're out there because they impact us and they impact the people around us. And all in all, when we show the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, it makes our lives better because we're treating others better. We're treating people the way God and Jesus would, would, would want us to treat them. You see, we have to do it and keep going through the, we have to not go through the motions, we have to keep going through it, we have to keep doing it. It's like a diet, right? You go on a diet, and I said for, you know, for a couple of days, you, you ate good, you counted your calories, you did your points or whatever, and you look in the mirror, and you're like, I don't see no difference, I guess this doesn't work. Now, if you push through, you, you keep going, then you'll see it work. We plant the tomato plant, and I watered it one day, and it rained two days after that, and I'm like, hey, you got enough to drink, tomato plant, where's my tomatoes? And the tomato talks back to me. He says, I will have been planted for a week. What do you expect? It takes time for fruit. It takes time for it to grow. So don't let the devil tell you, hey, you've tried this patience thing for like six hours. It's not working. Well, yeah, because I was asleep. <laughs> it happened to be from midnight to 6 a.m., right? Don't let the devil say, hey, you've been kind enough. You don't need to be any more kind. You can love people like God loved, but not, not that guy. Don't, don't you love that person. No, love turns things around. Love will turn the coworker that doesn't like you into one that, that, that likes you. Love will turn the situation around even when we don't see it. We just got to keep pushing, pushing through. You see... As you yield to God completely, when you come to Christ as an act of faith, he gives you the Holy Spirit who helps you produce those fruit in our lives. I can't produce love the way God wants me to without the Holy Spirit inside of me. I can't produce joy. I can't produce, I, it doesn't come out. I can't be patient in my own strength. I may be able to bench press 350 pounds. <laughs> no one laughed. I was glad no one laughed at that. I can't. It's like a buck 20. Anyway, I can't, I can do that on my own natural strength, but I need the help of, of God for patience. Does that make sense? And so we have to understand that hey, it's going to take some time, but when we do it, and we'll talk about that later on in this series, how, how we be the gardeners of the fruit. But when, when, we, when we are persevering through it, God will show up and it'll come out in our lives. Our last scripture, 1 John chapter 4. It's talking about he who is in you, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, is greater than he that's in this world. The New Living Translation says, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. So if we want to take this that, that we've already got the victory. We've already got the victory of the things that the, the flesh produces. We've already got the victory over those things. We don't have to be bitter. We don't have to have fits of rage. We don't have to be all those crazy things that we read. We've already got the victory over them. And another translation of 1 John chapter 4, 4 says, Children, you belong to God, and you have defeated these enemies. God's Spirit in you, God's Spirit is in you and is more powerful than, than the one who's in the world. So the, the, the power of God's inside of us, and it's already defeated anything we can come up against. It's defeated our lack of patience. It's defeated our lack of love. It's defeated our, our anxiety, our fear, our worries. It's defeated everything. So we, as we go through our lives, we must prune and remove thorns and weeds that try to hold us back, that try to hold back the growth of the Holy Spirit, that try to hold back the growth of fruit. If it's fear, cut it out. Say, hey, fear, I don't have to be here no more. Whatever you look at at the end of the day, what fruit is produced in my life? It's not to get discouraged. It's to get, you know what? You're already defeated. If you get anger or you get bitter or you get these things, it's already defeated. Now tomorrow, I'm going to live as a victorious and I'm going to continue to conquer that because the fruit of the Spirit is going to be evident in my life, not the fruit of the flesh. Let's pray. God, we thank you.
that we can look into our lives and we can know that we are victorious in Christ because that the Holy Spirit and it's the power of God's in us is greater than anything else in this world. And I thank you, Lord, that you can help us, you can lead us, you can give us the strength to love, to have patience, and all the other fruit of the Spirit that we're going to talk about here in, in the upcoming weeks and what we've already talked about uh, in the past. But God, I thank you because of your power and your grace in our lives, we can produce these types of fruit. And God, I thank you that no matter where we're at in life, we can still produce these fruit to a greater and better level. And if there's anybody here that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we thank you, Lord God, that we can wait no longer. We can know that today's the day that we gave our lives to Christ. And it's just simply by, by uttering, you don't, don't wait till you get home. You can do it now, and, and it's between you and God. But when, when that happens, then you'll see, if you haven't yet before, you'll see that I can love people with the God kind of love. And it's simply by saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross, for paying the price of sin in my life. And I thank you for forgiving me of everything that I've done. That's it. And when you do that, man, something great and powerful happens in our lives. And now we can love each other the way God wants us to love. If you've you've been born again and you haven't been able to make that change of loving someone the way God wants you to love, then, then wait no further. Start today. So God, we thank you that we can have the fruit of the Spirit evident in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.